Hello YouTube. This week I've got the keys to a 2017 Nissan Pathfinder Midnight Edition. Let's take a look. So this is a 2017 Nissan Pathfinder. This is a Midnight Edition which is uh, $48,558 list price. Uh, so basically it's 50,000 uh, Canadian once you add in freight and PDI and that you're going to be over 50,000. The Midnight Edition, uh, it adds the, the black mirrors, um, an extra panoramic sunroof in the back, the black wheels, uh, and a black spoiler on the back. A few other, uh, a few other features. It's basically the same price as the fully loaded, uh, fully loaded model. So it's got everything: leather and uh, blind spot detection and radar cruise, things like that. It has pretty much everything. It's a sharp-looking vehicle. Uh, I was comparing it to my friend's Highlander just now, and they're very similar. So if you're in the market for a seven-seater SUV, uh, is basically the Pathfinder and the, Highline, uh, the Highlander from Toyota are two very close competitors in this market. It does have a, a tow hitch on this and a backup camera. Let's uh, take a look inside the back here. Power tailgate. Of course, with the seven seats, you are uh, limited on the space in this back portion here. Um, but you do have this nice storage bin, which is pretty big. Um, and you have a, a Bose subwoofer as well that's added in there. So if you don't get the subwoofer, if you get a lower end model, you will, uh, you will have more space down here. So these seats, they, they fold pretty easily. Actually, with the headrests up, I kind of want to mention this, it's pretty much impossible to see out the back window. So if you are carrying seven passengers, uh, looking in your rearview mirror, you're not going to see very much. But if you're not carrying seven passengers, you just flip these down. And then, and then it's not really a problem. So those flip pretty easily. And then you can uh, just flip these seats like this. And I think most people for the most part always have those down unless they have uh, if they need more than five seats all the time and this and then you've got a ton of room there's a ton of room for stuff here and uh, you do have a 12 volt adapter on this side and you do have heat vents in that and speakers in the back for your rear passengers as well as cup holders um, and a uh, little accessory hook here so in the back seats, um, quite a bit of leg room actually, and these seats move fore and aft. So if you need more leg room in the back, then you've got it in, the, in that third row. And to access the third row, is you, you pull this up, and there you go, and that kind of folds, and then you can slide that up, and then there's quite a bit of room to get in here. If I flip this seat back up and show you how to get back here, it's not bad. It's actually, you can kind of stretch out. And from back here, you can see the second sunroof. So you have a sunroof for the rear passenger, so it's not very claustrophobic. And then you've got a sunroof up front, which I'll show you when I get up front. Also, uh, so in the back seat, you've also got uh, this flip down armrest slash cup holder area if you've only got uh, four people. This, these are actually pretty comfortable seats. They're a little bit flat, but they're not bad. Um, map pockets on either side and you do have automatic climate control as well down here for the rear and household AC outlet and heated seats so high and low for the uh, two outside rear seats so you've got a cup holder here and uh, your power windows and another cup holder in the door there Here's that sunroof in the front, which has a, a manual operated shade. And there's a power button here, easier to see from the back here, which uh, controls the, the shade for the rear uh, 
sunroof. And this is uh, what the dash looks like, a nice wide angle view. It is a kind of a wood trim that maybe it is real wood. It kind of feels like plastic, but they always do. So, uh, And it's a matte finish, not a shiny finish, which is interesting. So let's take a look at the front. All right, up front here, take a look at what we have. We've got uh, the center console here with a nice navigation display. Um, you've got camera options, gives you a nice 360 overhead view for parking, as well as a rear view. And you can, uh, you can switch that as well and see a nice, if you're looking, say you're parallel parking and you've got a car over here or a curb, you can, uh, you can see that. Um, and of course, these, uh, these lines here move with the steering wheel as well. Um, under apps, under apps here, you've got a bunch of uh, bunch of cool things. You have a driving performance, which will show you your fuel economy and fuel flow and uh, things like that. Uh, but probably the coolest is this performance meter. I'm not so sure it's really required in an SUV, but it it has uh, your lateral G forces over time. Um, whoops. And it maxes out at 0.5 Gs, which I was able to do pretty easily in the rain. So I'm not really sure why you would have that. Anyways, um, there's a whole bunch of other stuff in here. Uh, fuel economy, which interestingly doesn't give me a real number. So this is your average, this is your current fuel economy, which is just max because the engine's not running right now. And then your average fuel economy, which is kind of sitting between 10 and 15. Um, so it's about 12 and a half. It doesn't give me a number, and I haven't found a number yet, but maybe there is one someplace. And then uh, there's a score for your eco drive, how well you've been driving economically. Uh, you know, you've got your climate control in here, as well as your rear climate control and your navigation. Um, and that's about it. So there's, there's a bunch of apps. Uh, as I said, and you can connect your phone. There's a clock, a compass, uh, your email is in here, and there's a calendar, so you can, uh, you know, you can create reminders and things like that. Down here, we've got you've also got hard buttons for radio control and your in your uh, CD player, six disc changer. So if you, you know, you want to use that instead of using the, the display, you can still use that which is nice. Um, you've got automatic climate control, dual zone down here, and you've got heated and cooled seats uh, for both the driver and the passenger, and one, two, three uh, settings for each of those. Two cup holders, and then there's um, two-wheel drive, which you can lock it on to two-wheel drive, so that's front-wheel drive, not rear-wheel drive and automatic which most people would just leave on automatic now if you are in some mud or sand or something like that you can lock the four-wheel drive on and there is also a hill descent mode in the armrest uh it's kind of nice these are these are actually labeled upper and lower so you've got your upper box here which maybe you can throw your cell phone in and then uh, close that and you got your lower which has video input audio in two USBs, and the uh, SD card for the navigation system, as well as a 12-volt charging port. Uh, it's not very big. Like the competitor in the Highlander, you've got a nice huge bin here uh, with lots of storage space. So there isn't very much storage space in here. There is another little bin here, again, for your cell phone with a 12-volt power, two 12-volt powers. I don't, the camera is not going to be able to pick that up because they're way down in there. But there is two 12-volt powers in there. Um, you've got your start button here, which is standard. And then, uh, of course, your gauge display here, which is nice, bright white, easy to read. Um, and in here you can uh, use these buttons on the steering wheel. So let's show you what's on the steering wheel. You've got this kind of info button that changes the display. You've got your cruise control over here, your audio, and your uh, phone controls. So using the uh, 
the info display button you can see there's a picture of a, a car here and uh, you can switch between these different modes which show you things like uh, how your drivetrain is doing front and rear if you're using all-wheel drive uh, your radio station your compass and navigation um, and then you can do a bunch of settings in here with these switches like driver assist so we can have driver aids blind spot warning you can turn that on or off parking aids which has your your, your sensors you can change the volume sound and your di your distance you've got emergency braking which can be turned on or off as well so and uh, vehicle settings under there welcome lighting light sensitivity wiper speed whole bunch of stuff so there's a whole bunch of things in there um, down on the left hand side you've got a heated steering wheel which is nice you've got a button to open the rear tailgate and uh, some buttons for the uh, rear power uh, the 12 volt uh, or sorry 120 volt power as well and you got traction control off and blind spot monitoring off and there's a tow mode button um, down here as well and the uh, driver's seat is powered, uh, so is the passenger seat, but you've got uh, two memory uh, locations for the driver's seat if you need that. Um, and the key is it is a smart key, uh, and so you know you don't have pretty much ever have to take it out of your pocket. You just there's a little button on the door you open to lock it, and, uh, and you can just lock and unlock it that way, and then start the vehicle with the start button. Up top here, we've got a sunglasses holder and some reading lights and uh, an SOS button to call for uh, if there's an accident or something and you've got your power uh, moonroof buttons as well and the sun visors here they're pretty nice actually up here you've got a place for cards or whatever but you've also got this extra slide for the sun visors, which is always nice to have whenever you're, uh, you've got the sun just in that little spot between the mirror and the windshield. And you put it up like that and it covers it perfectly. All right, you'll notice uh, when, you, when you get on the road with the Pathfinder that it is really quiet. Uh, it does a really good job of getting rid of wind noise, getting rid of road noise, which is nice. Uh, it's a 200, uh, I believe, 84 horsepower, 260 some pound feet of torque, uh, three and a half liter V6 engine. So it, it pulls pretty good. It is mated to a CVT transmission, uh, continuous variable transmission, uh, which is, you know, an automatic transmission for all intents and purposes uh, to the to most people. Uh, some people don't like the feel uh, that, a, that a CVT transmission gives you because it kind of revs up and then uh, once you get up to speed it kind of drops down instead of the typical shift points but uh, Nissan's done a really good job uh, with this transmission on this vehicle I had no idea it was a CVT transmission until I looked it up so it you know I had a, a little bit of suspicion because I know Nissan uses CVTs a lot and there is a few times where I noticed the revs hanging a little bit longer than I would have expected, uh, say in a normal automatic transmission. But for the most part, um, it, it still uses kind of shift points programmed in and they may change those shift points depending on how you're driving. So if you're, you're being more aggressive with the throttle, they would hold that shift point a little bit longer, just like they would do in, uh, in, a, in a regular automatic transmission. It's just, uh, you'll kind of notice it free hanging the revs a little bit longer um, the one thing I forgot to mention uh, in my walk around or in my interior sh is uh, the uh, power telescoping and tilt steering wheel um, which is nice to have when you're driving you can ch you can kind of change your comfort level on the highway if you're sitting down for a long time it's a lot easier than pulling down the, uh, the manual handle and then losing control of your steering wheel the other thing uh, I've noticed uh, driving this is the steering wheel feels really small. And so it's it's not very hefty in the hands, but that's not my complaint really. It's the actual circumference of the steering wheel. It's a little bit small for the size of the vehicle. It feels like a car steering wheel, not an SUV steering wheel or, you know, or a truck steering wheel, I guess. Um, but 
it's possible that was, you know, their intent. Their intent was that uh, they wanted to make this feel like a car while you're driving it instead of feeling like a bigger SUV type thing. So it, it does uh, do that, but it, it is a little bit small. I think it could be a tiny bit bigger. Um, and the other thing is, so it does have radar cruise, which I did quickly mention. Um, and right now I'm matching the speed with the vehicle in front of me and uh, my speed is dropping. So now I'm going to about 100 kilometers an hour just as it keeps that distance the same all the time, which is nice if you drive uh, on a lot of two lane roads. I don't really uh, enjoy the radar cruise on the four lane roads so much because then what happens is you slow down. You don't really notice you're slowing down as it does it very gradually and then you have you end up having cars a lot of cars passing you because you've caught up to the slower cars uh, but on a two-lane road it's great because you can kind of zone out you really shouldn't but you can kind of zone out and not worry that uh, you're going to run into somebody uh, if you look away for a second now if you do put your signal light on um, it will start speeding up before you get out of the way of the other car um, so that is kind of nice and we do have blind spot indication on the mirrors as well. There it is, the 2017 Nissan Pathfinder Midnight Edition. It drives uh, really well, it drives like a car really, even though you've got a seven passenger vehicle. It is uh, 50 grand for this model, but uh, if you go, you know, you get the same or very similar driving experience with the base model as well, with the three and a half liter V6. And, uh, all-wheel drive as well. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel.